I'm going to show you how to seamlessly capture knowledge that automatically goes into unified inbox in Obsidian, and most importantly, how to process it. And at the heart of all of this is a popular service called Readwise. But the thing is, Readwise is now divided into two services, the regular Readwise and Readwise Reader. So what's the difference between the two? Well, Readwise acts as a middleman or a bridge between all the highlights that you make while browsing the web or reading and the place where you want to store them, like Notion or Obsidian. Readwise then released Readwise Reader, which is in my honest opinion the best read reader app that there is. But it's a lot more than that. Reader's purpose is to be an inbox for anything that you want to read on the web. That means newsletters, RSS feeds, Twitter threads, articles, and even YouTube videos. All of those things land there, and if you choose to highlight anything in Reader, it gets saved to Readwise and exported to your app of choice. On top of that, you can add your own notes to each highlight, which will also be exported alongside it. But you can't have Reader without also having a Readwise account, because Readwise is what makes Reader possible. It's what handles the importing and exporting of your highlights. There's a lot more to this, but first, why bother with this at all? And in all honesty, I was actually not a Readwise subscriber until Reader came along. It was a good service, sure, but it felt more like a nice to have rather than a need. But with Reader, it became a no-brainer for me. It added a ton of value to my workflow and I'm gonna go through all of my use cases and by the end of it, you'll see why I'm so passionate about it. All right, so first we need to set up a place where we want to export all of our highlights. For me, that's gonna be Obsidian. So I'm gonna come here into my Mastering Obsidian Vault and I'm gonna go into Settings, Community Plugins, Browse, and I'm gonna browse for the Readwise official plugin. I'm gonna install it, I'm gonna enable it and then head over to Options and I'm gonna connect it to Readwise. But before that, there's one thing that I change here, which is the configure resync frequency. And I change that from manual to every hour. And now we need to set up Readwise. So I'm gonna come here into readwise.io. And if you don't yet have a Readwise account, they have a 30 day free trial available. And if you use my link below, you get an extra 30 days on top of that. So once you have your account, we need to add Obsidian as an export location. So over here under connect and sync highlights, we can go to export. And over here, you see that I've already connected Obsidian. And if we press on configure, we can configure the way that Readwise exports into Obsidian. And up here is the folder structure. And the way this works is that Readwise will create a folder in your vault named Readwise. And inside that folder, you'll have a subfolder for books, another for tweets, etc. And by default, you'll have them as it shows here. So everything that Readwise classifies as books will be placed under the books subfolder in your Obsidian. And the same goes for articles and so forth. This is the way that I have mine set up as well. And then you can configure how your highlights get imported. You can leave it as is or use custom formatting, which is what I do. And there's a few things I change here. You're welcome to do the same. And I'll leave a link in the description to a repo that has my exact configuration if you just want to copy and paste it. And the first change is in the YAML front matter, which is all the way here at the bottom. You can see I added the tags Readwise Inbox as well as Readwise. And the way this works is that every new highlight will have a Readwise Inbox tag, which tells me that I need to review it. More on that in the later parts of the video. I also add a note created and last modified. This isn't necessary, but since every note in my vault has it, I have it here as well. And lastly, I completely changed the code for the highlights. And there's no point going over this, but the result is a much more organized way of seeing the highlights. This wasn't done by me, it was done by Eleanor, and I'll put a link to her readwise settings in the description as well. And once that's done, you can come back to Obsidian and initiate sync. And everything will show up here in the readwise folder in the formatting that we've done. And if I come to the highlights of this book, The Shallows, you can see it looks much better than the default configuration. And then you're going to want to set up Readwise Reader. So if you come here to readwise.io slash read and press open reader, it's going to open up Readwise Reader. And because it connects with your Readwise account, there's not much that you need to do other than download the mobile app and maybe a browser extension. I'm not going to go in depth on this because I made a full video dedicated to just Readwise Reader and I'm going to link to it somewhere here on the screen. But in short, Reader is like Pocket or Instapaper, but on a whole other level, because it's also a Twitter, newsletter, and RSS reader. And it even works for YouTube videos. And everything that you highlight inside Reader will be exported to Obsidian using the same configuration that we just did in Readwise. I use Reader as a landing ground for nearly everything that I consume online. Everything lands here, but not everything goes in my Obsidian vault. And the first use case for me is all the RSS and email newsletters that I subscribe to. Because when I sign up to someone's newsletter or an RSS feed, I can just give them my Readwise email instead of my actual email. And I'm definitely not alone in this, because if I pull up my subscribers to my monthly newsletter, there are hundreds of you using a Readwise email to get it in your inbox. You can find your Readwise email by coming here to the plus icon and then more import options. And it's right here under subscribe to email newsletters. 
This is great because not only is the UI so much better in Reader, but if there's something that I want to save, I can just highlight it, and it's going to show up in my Obsidian Vault immediately. And if there isn't, I'll just archive it and move on. Then we have Twitter, which is an interesting one, because you can save tweets to Readwise by either replying to that tweet with Save to Readwise, or if you want a more discreet approach, by sending it to Readwise's Twitter account as a private message. And then those tweets are gonna show up in your Obsidian Vault, which for a single tweet is fine because you've definitely read it and you found value in it before sending it. The problem comes when we're talking about a long Twitter thread that we want to read inside of Reader, but don't want it to necessarily end up inside Obsidian, because what if we got nothing of value out of it? And luckily there's a way around this, so if we come here to Reader and we go into our preferences, and then we come to integrations and we connect our Twitter account, and then we go into settings, we can decide where we want both single tweets and threads to be saved. I personally disable threads from Readwise and enable them in Reader. That way, if I bookmark a thread and find nothing of value out of it, I can just archive it and it's not cluttering my Obsidian Vault. And then we have another one of my favorites, which is YouTube videos. I watch a bunch of YouTube content, both for fun and for learning, and all the videos I watch for learning, I open them in Reader using the browser extension, which is going to look something like this. And as you can see, it has a transcript here, and you can highlight anything you want and leave a note, and it's going to be exported into Obsidian. Another great quality of life improvement is highlighting on my Kindle. I read all of my books on my Kindle, which is connected to Readwise, so every time I highlight something there, it goes to my Readwise and then Obsidian. And lastly, we have articles that I come across that didn't arrive to Reader. This usually happens via Twitter recommendation or via newsletter. For instance, this happens all the time with Hacker News, which compiles a bunch of relevant links related to programming. I then move the ones I want to read over to Reader. And if you want to learn more about programming, then you're going to want to check out Brilliant.org, which is a sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform geared towards STEM topics. It's the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. It doesn't matter whether you're just starting out or if you're advanced. Whatever your skill level, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you learn at your own pace. If you're not sure where to start with programming, the new Thinking in Code course gets you designing simple programs to solve real-world problems right away from Maps app navigation all the way to writing a program that automatically responds to work messages. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash from Sergio and the first 200 people that sign up get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. All right, so now let's go over processing because without this step, you're really just archiving all of those highlights in your vault. And if that's all that you want, that's great. But I know myself well enough to know that I'm not gonna actively search for what I saved. There will never be a day where I go, okay, let's go through every single thing I've ever highlighted. So the first thing I do is to create an easy way for me to see which highlights have not yet been processed. In the previous section, when we configured our export settings in Readwise, we added Readwise Inbox as a tag. So if I come to one of those highlights, like the shallows, you can see here we have tags, Readwise Inbox. This means that we now have that tag inside our Obsidian Vault as well. So over here on the right, if we go to tags, and we scroll the way down, we have here Readwise Inbox. And if I click on it, we can see this note right here, which is yet to be processed. And this is fine, but I prefer to have a dedicated page for this. So I'm gonna make a new page by pressing Command N, and I'm gonna title it Readwise Inbox. And then I'm just gonna add a very simple data view query, which goes data view table from Readwise Inbox. And then when I press Command D to go into preview mode, it's just gonna list all the notes that have a Readwise Inbox tag. So now every time I add a new highlight to Readwise, it's gonna show up here in this page telling me that I need to process it. And the way I process my highlights depends on the highlight itself. Some highlights will inspire me to build my own notes and thoughts around them, while others are just meant to be complements to my own existing knowledge. But in both ways, it's essential that I integrate them with my Obsidian Vault in a way that I'll stumble upon them again without trying. And this is all done by using what I love most about Obsidian, which is the local graph view, which is over here on the right. And if you don't see it, just press Command P for Command Palette, type in local graph, hit enter, and then you can drag this to wherever you want in your vault. I'm not gonna go in detail on this because I did a full video on it, but in short, it lets you see not only what notes are linking to the current note, but it's outgoing and neighbor links. I have a very short example here in this vault in a local graph folder. So if I press here, note one, and then I come here to the local graph, go into the gear icon, filters, and then increase the depth, you can see that all I have in Note 1 is a link to Note 2, but because Note 2 also links to Note 3, I'm able to see that over here on the local graph view. This is just a very basic example, but it shows that it's no longer the case that I have to actually search for a specific note to find it. 
I'll stumble upon it by opening any of the neighbor notes, and this is how I often come across highlights from many years ago, which adds a ton of value. So is Readwise worth it? And for me, yes, definitely. Like I said in the beginning, I didn't think Readwise on its own without Reader offered enough value to justify the subscription costs, which is why I never even made a video about it before. And if you go to readwise.io slash read and you scroll all the way down to the frequently asked questions, there's one here that is, how will Reader be priced? And they say here that once Reader exits beta sometime this year, they intend to reprice Readwise and Readwise Reader for new subscribers. But they also say that they won't increase the price for existing subscribers as long as you sign up before the beta ends. Either way, you can give it a try completely for free, and if you sign up using my link below, you'll have double the trial period to a full 60 days. But the thing is, all of this is just to get other people's ideas and content into our vault. But what about our own ideas and thoughts? And that's exactly what I went over in this video right here. So I'll see you there.